Hello everyone, welcome to One Page Biology. In this video tutorial, we are going to discuss about how the membrane phospholipids are formed. So, in the earlier video, we saw how the formation of fatty acids take place. Now, let us understand how the particular phospholipid is formed. So, as we know that phospholipid can be monoacylglycerol or diacylglycerol or tricylglycerols. So, for the formation of a phospholipid we need two compounds one is a glycerol another is fatty acid so now we already know the formation of fatty acid so let us understand how the glycerol is formed so as you can see that here glycerol is basically formed from one of the intermediates of glycolysis so in glycolysis we know that glucose is broken down in a stepwise manner so when glucose gets broken down, one of the intermediates is DHAP. DHAP stands for diatroxyacetone phosphate. So this DHAP can be converted into glycerol 3 phosphate by simple reduction reaction or directly the cell converts glycerol into glycerol 3 phosphate. So first you need to know that there is formation of glycerol 3 phosphate in the formation of phospholipid. And then there will be attachment of a particular fatty acid to glycerol 3 phosphate resulting in the formation of particular mono di or tricylglycerol depending upon the number of fatty acids which are attached. So in this particular reaction as you can see that this particular glycerol 3 phosphate now is basically getting connected with a particular fatty acid. Now remember that for the attachment of a particular fatty acid there is a requirement of a coenzyme A because coenzyme A is a transporter molecule and these fatty acids are basically transported from the mitochondria into the cytoplasm so directly the fatty acids cannot be transported and they cannot cross the membranes of mitochondria and that's why they require a transporter molecule that is coenzyme A so first the fatty acid will get attached to a coenzyme A as you can see here and once the fatty acid has been attached to a coenzyme A molecule then can get attached to the particular glycerol 3 phosphate. So now as you can see that in this particular picture there are two fatty acids which are attached to the glycerol 3 phosphate and this particular structure which is formed is known as a phospholipid which is also called as phosphodidic acid because there are two fatty acid chains and on the third carbon there is only a presence of single phosphate such a resultant product is called as glycerophospholipid or you can also call it as a phosphodidic acid now this phosphodidic acid can be further converted into a tricylglycerol that is the third carbon again can be attached with a third type of fatty acid chain so if the third carbon is attached with the fatty acid chain the net, net result will be a tricylglycerol or if there is a addition of a particular type of an amino acid on the third carbon that is a particular head group is attached on the third carbon then the net result will be a particular type of a membrane phospholipid so different types of head groups can be attached to the third carbon that is it can be serine choline ethnolamine etc so as you can see here that there is a particular head group which is attached to the third carbon. So as you can see that here the 1,2 diacylglycerol is getting converted into tricylglycerol by attachment of a third fatty acid on the third carbon or here particularly on this side there you can see that there is an attachment of a particular type of head group and there will be a different type of a phospholipid getting formed depending on the type of a head group which is attached. So now you have to remember that how a particular head group is attached to a third carbon. So for that remember there comes a role of a particular intermediate that is phosphoric acid. So in this particular picture you can see that phosphoric acid will condense both the OH groups. One OH group is of the head group and the other OH group is of diacylglycerol. So both the OH groups will get connected to the phosphoric acid resulting in the formation of 
a bond which is nothing but a phosphodiester bond and net result is going to be a particular formation of a phospholipid a type of phospholipid depending on which type of head group it has so remember that phosphoric acid can help in connecting the OH group of head group and the OH group of diacylglycerol. Now in this particular diagram you will understand that how exactly different types of phospholipids are formed. Now there was an important pathway which was discussed by the great scientist Eugene Kennedy in case of bacteria that is E. coli. So Eugene Kennedy had explained two different strategies by which the phospholipids can be formed in the bacteria. Now see that one strategy is a particular diacylglycerol as you can see a particular diacylglycerol will get connected to this particular nucleotide which is CDP. CDP stands for cytidine diphosphate. Now CDP is a type of a nucleotide. So if diacylglycerol gets attached to this CDP the resultant structure is going to be CDP diacylglycerol. So once the CDP diacylglycerol is formed then it can attach to a particular head group with the help of this OH group. So there will be a bond formed between the phosphate and the OH group. There will be removal of one CMP that is cytosine monophosphate and the resultant structure is going to be a particular phospholipid. So this is one strategy that is in this we saw that first there was formation of CDP diacylglycerol and then CDP diacylglycerol was attached to the head group. The second strategy is the CDP that is cytosine diphosphate will first attach to the head group and this particular entire structure will now attach to the OH group of 1,2 diacylglycerol. Right? So try to understand this. One method is first 1,2 diacylglycerol will attach to CDP resulting in the formation of CDP diacylglycerol or CDP will first attach to head group and then it will attach to 1,2 diacylglycerol. In both the ways what will happen is one CMP is going to be removed and finally there will be a formation of a particular type of phospholipid. So this strategy was explained to us by Eugene Kennedy in case of E. coli. So now in case of bacteria what happens next is once CDP diacylglycerol is formed then there can be addition of one more glycerol 3 phosphate. Once a glycerol 3 phosphate is added one CMP will be removed and the net structure is going to be phosphatidyl glycerol 3 phosphate. On the other side if there is addition of particular amino acid that is serine again one CMP will be removed the resulting structure will be phosphatidyl serine. Now once phosphatidyl glycerol 3 phosphate is formed from this side there will be removal of phosphate the resulting structure is going to be phosphatidyl glycerol or if or if from this particular phosphatidyl serine if we remove one CO2 carbon dioxide then the resulting structure is going to be formation of phosphatidyl ethanolamine. So there are different ways by which the cell can form different type of phospholipids in the cell and as we just had discussed earlier that all these different types of phospholipids are required for the different types of cell signaling in the cell. Now you can see here that there is a formation of an important phospholipid called as cardiolipin and how this cardiolipin is formed is majorly by the connecting two phosphatidyl glycerol. So here you can see this, this is one phosphatidyl glycerol, this is another phosphatidyl glycerol. So when two phosphatidyl glycerols combine, there is removal of a single glycerol and the net resultant structure is basically a type of phospholipid which is known as cardiolipin. So likewise there are different types of phospholipids which can be formed in the cell. Here you can see that there is addition of inositol again which is a different type of a sugar which is added to the third carbon. So this inositol attaches to the phosphate group resulting in the formation of phosphatidyl inositol. So all these are different types of membrane phospholipids which are formed in the cell. So whether it is a bacterial cell or eukaryotic cell different types of 
membrane phospholipids can be formed in the cell. So I hope that you have understood the formation of different types of phospholipids in this particular video tutorial. If you have understood the concept, please like and share the video with your friends. If you have any doubts or suggestions, do mention in the comment section. And don't forget to subscribe the channel One Page Biology. See you all in the next video with some another biology related topic. Till that time, take care of yourself. Thank you so much. Bye.